voice disorders have a huge impact on people's lives. This weekend's Walk for Talk is designed to raise awareness about voice disorders and let families coping with the issues know that they are not alone. Joining me now is Sarah Quintana, a voice pathologist who works at LSU and the Arklatex Airway Voice and Swallow Center. We also have a little guest over here, our cute little puppy. Her name is puppy. puppy. We can't see her, but she's so cute. <laughs> There she is, puppy. First of all, um, tell us about dysphonia. Like, you know, we're, we're hearing more and more language disorders, speech disorders. We've heard aphasia. What is dysphonia? That's a great question. So I think the first thing to know is that voice and speech are separate. So okay. to have voice, you need three things. You need airflow, you need the vocal folds to come together and vibrate to make the sound source, and you need that sound to travel forward. Wow. An example of voice without speech is like a baby crying. Okay. Now speech, you don't really need voice to have speech. Speech refers to the system of the lips, teeth, and tongue, the articulator, articulators that make um, the sounds of our language. So an example of speech without voice would be whispering. Oh, wow. So with dysphonia, are you born with it? Is it acquired later in life or could it be both? It could be anything. You could certainly have congenital causes of dysphonia. Uh -huh. And um, we serve patients who have acquired causes of dysphonia mm -hmm. as well. Um, we're really lucky to take care of patients in the Shreveport Arklatex region. Mm -hmm. Uh, mostly adults, so mm -hmm. we're seeing aqu mostly acquired forms of dysphonia, but certainly some of our patients have had dysphonia since birth. Can they recover and certainly with so therapy? Absolutely. So with a good diagnosis and a good treatment plan, there are many options for managing the different types of dysphonia. Um, one of the types of dysphonia that we manage a lot is laryngeal dystonia. Okay. That's a neurologic cause of a voice problem that makes the muscles of the voice box spasm when you don't want them to. And so while there's not really a cure for that neurological impairment, we have lots of treatment options that help patients go on and lead their lives like normal. Is dysphonia rare or is it more common than we think? It's more common than you would think. It impacts millions and millions of people across the country. And I'm sure every one of us has lost our voice at least once. Mm -hmm. Yes, laryngitis and other things that make you lose your voice, especially during allergy season. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you, Dominique. Back in a moment.